Hey folks, welcome to the Dark Horse Podcast. I have the pleasure of sitting with my good friends, Amy and Devin James, who are co-executive directors of the Web3 Working Group, which is a 501c3. They know things. I've been talking to them for years about questions surrounding uh, the security and functioning of the web. And I'm going to persuade them to speak as much in English as possible in talking about where we are headed and uh, what internet it is we will face once we get there. Amy and Devin, welcome to Dark Horse. Hi, Brett. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Great to see you, Brett. Yeah, it's great to see you guys. Um, It has been a long journey behind the scenes where we have checked in regularly about uh, issues of safety and security on the web, uh, issues of the, wow, I can't use the term equitable anymore, but the uh, (laughs) the way that the uh, web distributes content and pays creators, all all sorts of issues that are increasingly central to this mechanism we all use uh, to interface. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hoping you guys will do is talk to us about the current state of the web, about Web3. I'm hoping you will define that term. Exactly when when Web3 began, because Bitcoin came out in 2009, but blockchain actually came out the same year that the web did, or it was invented the same year that the web did. Or I think. Around then, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was actually to solve, uh, it was uh, a couple of guys named um, Haber and Stornetta. and Stornetta that wanted to solve for, they ran into some fraudulent biology papers. <laughs> Um, and they wanted to be able to basically say, I want to have, or really what it was is they they saw that some changes had been made. Something had been published, and then they made changes to it, and then they republished it. And it wasn't transparent that the changes had been made. And so they wanted to have a database that was replicated enough times where each uh, copy of it was identical to each other so that you could actually see if anyone's trying to make any alterations to things. And we look at the technologies, you're talking about a mechanism for ensuring authenticity. Well, suddenly authenticity is on a lot of people's minds because we recognize that we're like hours away from deep fakes that are so good that you can't detect That's them right. by looking at you know the direction of the shadows and the stuff right. that we used to be able to do to figure out whether a photograph was for real. 